good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, isn't it? If you're not happy you're here, I hope by the end of service tonight you will be happy that you came. It's just wonderful to be with God's people and uh, to just worship the Lord together, spend time looking into His Word, bearing one another's burdens, singing together. It really is a wonderful opportunity. Thank you for making prayer meeting a priority tonight. Let's bow our heads. Let's invite the presence of the Lord. Father, it's us again gathered together into your sanctuary tonight. I'm asking that you would do your work in each of our hearts. You know each one of us. You know, you know the circumstances, the details of our lives. And we've gathered together into your sanctuary. And we're asking that you would come and do your work in our hearts Bless our time together. We sing and pray and look at your word and encourage one another. We pray that you would just do your work in our hearts. And for all that's accomplished, we'll not fail to praise you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's join in the singing. Brother Rick, come to lead us today. Get your hymnals and turn to page 51. 51. I wonder... What's your happy place? Is it a garden? Is it the woods? <coughs> Is it the library? If it's not a garden, let you think about what your happy place is when you sing this song tonight. If you want to say, in the library, you can go ahead. If you can get it to fit in there. Say that, but I think what the songwriter was really wanting was for you to get to your happy place spiritually, and I, evidently his thought was the quietness of a garden. And I know this would be Mary's happy place; it would be the garden. She loves it so much, so I'm sure she'll sing in the garden. But uh, you're you're welcome to sing whatever you want to sing. But the main thing is tonight, think about the fact that the Lord does want to meet with us from time to time. Yes, He does. That's right. And He uh, can choose to do wherever that is. It doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm grateful for that as well. But let's try to emphasize the song tonight. Let's let the men sing verse 1. And then the ladies will join and sing on verse 2. And then we'll all join together on verse 3. And of course, we'll all sing together on the choruses. So ladies, or men, you started out, ladies, verse 2. Oh, 
to 61. Day by day. Now I know that that's very critical for all of us to realize that's how we make it spiritually. Just day by day. I'm glad we don't get a load of bad things all in one day. And I'm glad we don't get a load of good things all in one day. It's just I, we understand the fact that we have to walk day by day. And we do, and that is scriptural for us to know and realize that we need to have a day-by-day -day experience. Yes, yes. So tonight, I would like for maybe you to pick out a verse that you like. And we'll let you do a quiet testimony. You can just stand quiet and let that be your testimony tonight. Any of those verses, or if all three of them appeal to you, you can stand all through all three of them. But you look at a lot of those. Each passing moment, strength I find meet my trials here. Every day with the Lord himself is near me. Wow, that's wonderful. With a special mercy for each hour. And then verse 3, help me then in every tribulation. Looking forward to, to the things that could possibly happen in our lives. So to trust thy promises, O Lord. So hopefully some of these verses will speak to you tonight.
and thank the Lord for his presence. Well, I stood up on the first verse and I just caught myself not being able to sit back there. That, uh, that song has just got to be one of many favorites, but one of my favorites. Because I find that if I try to live week by week or month by month or year by year, I always get myself in trouble. <laughs> I get myself in conflict or get myself in discouragement. But if I take one day at a time and one step in that day at a time, the Lord himself is with me with a special mercy for each other. Praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise a lot of praise. Don't you? Yeah. Amen. Praise, 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 praise. 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 This is a good atmosphere to go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Gary, would you lead us tonight as we pray? And uh, there are several requests. Maybe first on our list tonight ought to be Ellie. Uh, her daddy is preaching tonight. They're on the same time we are. As soon as they started at 7. So uh, her daddy will be preaching here before long, and she will be interpreting. And I just, I just want us to pray that God will come on both of them with such anointing, such power that uh, God would use them in a remarkable way at youth convention. Of course, pray for the youth convention and uh, for all the young people that are already there. Our group that will be going on Friday morning and. Uh, for the entire weekend. So it'll be a high time and a time of making definite spiritual progress for yes. the young people. So let's remember, remember youth convention, Ellie and her daddy. We want to remember Daniel Shirk uh, had the accident on Saturday and uh, came through surgery well. My last report, and I, if anybody has a more up to date than this, uh, you feel free to speak up, but I've been told that he's still not able to move one leg or feel in one leg and maybe not the other foot and has some feeling in the other leg. They're saying that it's a long road, this kind of injury, this kind of recovery, and it's too early to tell whether those things are permanent, but it's very, very scary and the family certainly, certainly needs prayer. Be in the hospital, yes. They had him under the chair for the first time this morning and it was a lot Yes. Very painful. Yes. So let's remember him in regards to his pain as well. Yeah. And uh, so let's let's just pray for Daniel mm -hmm. and his family. They need they desperately need our prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to remember Patty's cousin Bethany. Bethany's been very very ill. Him and Patty went up on Sunday afternoon to see her Sunday evening, and. Uh, a little bit better maybe since Sunday, but still very, very critically ill. Has had a lot of physical trouble over many, many years. Uh, so, uh, but this is this has been very, very intense. So let's remember uh, Brittany as we pray. Uh, Bethany, Bethany, yes, Bethany as we pray. And uh, then <clears throat> we want to remember brother and sister Whit, especially tonight. Uh, Sister Witt was moved to a rehab nursing facility, and uh, and of course that's a that's a new chapter for mm -hmm. Brother Witt and Sister Witt, and it's very very difficult. So would you help us pray for Brother and Sister Witt? And God, would, Brother Witt wants to take take her home. Uh, this is more to get her back on her feet and her hip heal and so forth, but. Uh, but it, it's it's really really they need our prayers and our love. So uh, if you some especially you men who feel like calling his number, and he's not able to answer. He might not be able to, but you can leave him a message that you're praying for, and that would be an encouragement. So let's remember, brother, sister, with. And I know some of you don't buy a seer, so yes, share. Sure. Same to Regina, uh, 
recognized us lit up when we came in the room. And uh, so, but let's remember both of them. They need us. I think tonight we ought to give the Lord thanks as well. And I don't want to take Sister Albertson's place in this, but I can't tell you how thrilled I was to see her walk in the door tonight. And her bone has healed sufficiently that she can begin putting pressure on and let the weight on us. I'm walking with a walker still, but uh, to relieve that pressure and that weight, but I thank God for that progress. We ought to together lift our hearts and praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. Thank God for touching Sister Albertson to that here. I'm so very grateful. Any other requests you want to remember tonight as we pray? I do remember Sister Cooper. She's kind of had a little yes. setback with the, with the wound that they're trying to treat as well. So. Let's remember Sister Cooper and Brother Cooper as well. Mm. And, uh, yes. and I know, I know she, her, her recovery, she has made lots of progress, but her recovery has had setbacks again and again. So, mm. And that's probably uh, not unusual, really, yeah. but... Let's remember Brother and Sister Cooper as we pray. Yes, Dustin. I appreciate your prayers for my son, Chris. He's been out about six months from a workers' comp um, accident. Like a collapsed disc in his back. And it's um, heading towards you know, getting back to work. And, and uh, looks like that will happen maybe within the next six weeks or so. So I appreciate your prayers. Yes. yes. Let's remember Chris as we pray tonight. All right. Maybe you have an unspoken need by a praise hand needs across the congregation. Let's stand together as we pray. Here at Leaders, let's lift together and join him as he leads us tonight. Praise Father tonight. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. We thank you. All we do is we give you praise and praise. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we, we thank you for your touch on the name of the Lord. Lord, to call the name of the Lord. Thou art good. You are merciful. Your grace is real. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for your touch. Thank you for your help to Sister Cooper. Continue to give her help. We pray. Touch her with the issues she's facing. Touch Lonnie and lead her tonight. Oh, God. Oh, God. Put your arms around them and encourage and strengthen them, we pray. Please help them, Lord. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, we're trusting you. We're believing you, Lord. We're trusting you to do it for Jesus' sake. Praise God. Oh, Jesus, we're trusting you tonight. Oh, God. 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 We're trusting you. sudden you say, you know what, God has been here in our prayers. God has heard our prayers. Praise God. And I Amen. Praise, God. praise God. Praise the Lord. And uh, I kind of liked Rick's uh, little admonition that if it wasn't a garden for you, uh, wherever you meet the Lord. <laughs> and 
I, I just about sang, I come to the sunroom alone. <laughs> And I would have meant no, no sacrilege about that because it is a time early in the morning before daylight when I meet with the Lord. He meets me there. <laughs> and I thank you. Thank you. You feel like praising the Lord. We're going to have a little something extra tonight uh, in just a few moments, but I want to give you some time to praise the Lord. It's so good to have the buyers back. Uh, Sister Byer and, and Dorcas and Emily. Emily. And uh, so we're going to hear from all three of them just briefly. And uh, I don't care if it's a long. We, you know, we had a long missionary service <laughs> recently. And it, wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister. That, that day by day is exactly how, how I going. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I think it's a little bit over 100 days from when I last walked to when I was able to walk again. Mm -hmm. And first time tonight since the prayer meeting on the 11th of, the, of October that I was in our van. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just, to me, it matters. Yes, it, matters. it was yes, It was a day every day. You know, I couldn't yeah. look at, I, I didn't know how long it'd be, mm -hmm. but I couldn't look at the whole thing and say, I gotta have this all in one lump. I had to make yeah. The Lord has been here. I was uh, blogging today about this last uh, cancer chapter on our blog and, and thinking how good God has been. Praise God. So I'm here. And I, I wrote in there, I've seen his fingerprints yes. all along the way. That's right. His hand on our lives and, yes. and the blessings of, of our church family, the blessings of our our own children and, and their care for us. And, you know, I I don't know. You know, I I still have cancer in that leg. So, um, you know, I'm trusting the medicine I'm on now will will help drive that cancer away and and on my shoulder. But you know, we don't know how much longer we have any of us. And I I maybe have more of a an understanding of you know I have maybe this long. Yeah. Where other people might not know, but I want my days to count. Yeah, and one thing that our our kids wanted us to do for Christmas, we didn't have them all there, but Elizabeth headed it up and brought it to us. A little box, pretty little box, has at least 80 pieces of paper in it with things on it they want us to talk about. Advice from Mother and Daddy. And so every few days we, we get several of them and talk them over and then we record our, our thoughts about that subject. And then we, we turn them to MP3s and send them to the kids. And, mm -hmm. and they tell us they're enjoying them, mm -hmm. <laughs> that they love them. <laughs> but, you know, we, we pray as we do it, Lord, don't let us feel like, or make them feel like we know everything mm -hmm. or that we're, you know, telling someone they're not doing the right thing, but just, this is how God's led us. This is how God's helped us. And it can be a help. It can be like a legacy for them. Absolutely. To have our voices giving them yes. wisdom from the Lord, hopefully. Yes. And we just want our lives to mount for something for yes. Him yes. that will go past yes. how many days Amen. we have. That's yes. right. Yes. But God is very good. Yes. And I'm so glad that every day His presence Praise God. Praise God. I like Brother Rick's uh, substitution for that song as well. My wife's head jerked around when I came to the library to do his still in the books. Wherever we go, that's where God is. He leads us there. And that's why the church was praying a week ago. I requested prayer for the GPS revival and the Shelby Boy Bible. And uh, God just, people drew close on that Thursday night. I think 50 people probably streamed down to those little altars in the front of the chapel and just nice, nice. responded to God. And it just seemed like every service there was a people were responding. And uh, I know it's not always about putting your heart, sometimes it's what you do your, inside your heart as you respond. But I was so thankful for building hearts. Amen. I was writing today a pastoral devotion.
emotional for next month's bulletin, and I was thinking about how our emotions come and go. We might have a high time, but the next week may not be. But that song says it so well, trust and obey. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. other way to be happy in Jesus' yes. life. Amen. Trust Amen. and obey. And I think if we'll do that, Amen. God will keep working. Amen. Yes. Yes. Praise, Praise God. God. Yes. Praise, Praise God. Yes. Amen. You know, the, the two testimonies we've had are just both chock full of good, good, sound, yes. mature, spiritual depth. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for it. Yes. Amen. And I want to tell you, that's some good sound depth that's right there, right. too. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. I'm so glad he's with us and he'll never, and he's never going to leave us. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I'm so glad that he always answers our prayers. Praise yeah. the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yes. I'm glad he's with us and I'm glad that he died. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. Yes. God. Amen. Yes, he Amen. Yes, he does. And will never leave us and never forsake us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Yes, right here. I'm glad that we can always trust him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. So Boy, the composite of all these kids' mm -hmm. testimonies. Oh, mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Someone else want to My name is Sam. Praise the Lord. I've just been thinking this past, uh, we were, revival was a very, very special time for me. I uh, went in with a lot of uh, prayer and fasting, and seeking after God. He just so wonderfully met with me over and over. And as great as the service is more again and again, my highlight for the past two weeks was morning after morning at 6 a.m. where God would just come out and would meet with me. And he's just been so good and so wonderful. And I just want to serve him with all my life. And I think he's been teaching me to trust and obey. And I just have some great saints at this church and my other church, just different people I know that are just so, they, they just serve God and they made it look so, so uh, attractive. And I said, God, I want to be like that. And he said, but I, I want you to be like Jesus. And that is my greatest desire is that I make you like Jesus. And I don't care if it looks like anyone else or it doesn't look like anyone else. I intend to obey him Amen. and go through Praise with him. God. And Jesus Praise is just God. so wonderful. And just, hallelujah. And I intend to make it. And I'm so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides with him. And I, he always saved me, entirely sanctifies me. He's daily keeping me. I'm walking with the King. Praise God. God is with us. I was remarking the other day to my sister. I said, it's one thing to have a God that's for you. It's another thing to have a God that's that's with you. And I have a God that is both for me and with me. And I just say Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise, God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Amen. 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 Every heart clear? Amen. Nick? I want to thank God. Uh, um, we have a friend that was in a very difficult situation. We've been trying to be a really, really important issue in their life. And somebody who's really trying to serve God. And God has met with them and helped them out in a lot of different ways. And it's nice to know that when you can't be there, God is there. Yes. You have all the good yes. in here. Okay, Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So good to have Nikita back. Glad to see you. Amen. Praise God. All right, every heart clear. All right, we're going to have these three that went to Honduras speak for us, and I'm not sure how they want to do it, but however you want to do it, I invite you to come here and do it. So, Dorcas, you start us off. I'm just going to go down here and uh, you know, let them. I guess I was voted in to start them off. <laughs> oh, well, our 
our trip was really, really good. This is my third missions trip, technically. I grew up in French-speaking Quebec, so even on our cereal boxes or on, on any of our stuff, nothing was allowed to be in English. So that was very normal to me. So as soon as I hit the airport and got back into, um, got wherever we went, to Honduras, I was right there speaking French. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, this is a, this was a mental, for every time I went to try to pick up any words that Emily had tried to, teach me, I, um, I was right away resorting back to French. <laughs> but our trip was really, really fun. Really, really enjoyed it a lot. And um, I think I went into this trip a little different perspective because the other times I went, I was younger. I was a part of a big team. Um, it was kind of exciting, looking forward to my future. What can I do for God? This time I went very much with everything, seeing everything through Esther's eyes and how much she had, maybe in a way, maybe how much she had left behind. There's a quote I didn't get exactly, but it's something not so much about missions. It's not so much about what you give up and how much you go, but who you're willing to send and let go and encourage, wow. usually talking about your children, wow. letting them go. And that was that first weekend. We went to a youth camp, and that was all I could picture was Emily going. I was just like, wow, like my children are going to go to the mission field, and I would have to just give them over to this. And it was powerful. And by the end of that first weekend, um, it was completely surrendered, totally given to God. You know, of course it was before I went, but um, that was a really cool thing. So being at the, being at the first weekend was a youth camp, um, just seeing Emily interact with the young people was probably a highlight for me because we went in, it was entirely Spanish. The girl, she was thrown onto a team, no English speakers, no one was around. Esther and Jeremy were busy. I was off to the side. She was on her own <laughs> with a hundred young people and listening to all the rules of the games. Didn't, you know, she had to wade her way through all of that. And she did amazing. I was really, really proud of her. But um, seeing everything from Esther and Jeremy's perspective and her perspective was definitely, definitely the switch. So a couple, couple quick things that I stood out that stood out to me was um, some of the struggles that I sensed Esther and Jeremy working their way through as they went cross-culture, which I think is true of anyone going cross-culture, but um, not wanting to offend. That was probably one of the primary things. I, we worked 20 years cross-culturally with African Americans, and you know the things that offend. And so I went in knowing that I did not, I wanted everyone to think I was the friendliest, kindest person in the world, you know? And I saw that through Esther and Jeremy's perspective, how that weight was on them constantly, 24 seven, where they wanted to love people. And I wanted to look friendly, I wanted to represent Esther and Jeremy well. I wanted them to, everyone to like Esther and Jeremy, so I wanted to make sure I did a good job, you know? <laughs> so the youth camp was really cool because it brought together about five or eight different, five day different youth groups from different churches. So even not speaking Spanish, you could tell which ones came from Christian homes and which ones did not. And once we left there, we went to where Esther and Jeremy live, back to Tegucigalpa, which is a large city. And their church that they're working with specifically is very, very poor. So probably a highlight for me was being in their church. The youth camp was cool because it brought all, a lot of ministries together. But the youth camp, but going to their church in Las Subas really um, just where the rubber met the road. So Tuesday, I had never done this, I've done mission strips, but I went back into where all of their people are living. It was just winding, Esther was like sliding down a hill, Emily was carrying cupcakes. It was very, very rural. I wasn't expecting that, I, just, I, didn't, I didn't realize. So I went back into these communities where there was um, just little houses with tin and wood and um, no electricity, no running water. Some of the kids were missing because they, she said, you'll never, you'll never have any bad smell. She said they shower all the time <laughs> and they were. Kids were off in the creek um, getting cleaned up. I mean, just, it was a really, but very, very, very poor. And I guess I wasn't expecting that as much as what I, what I saw. So those would be the people that Esther and Jeremy work with. So she, I talked to her today and last night they, they had their, um, all of their sign up for their bus minutes, their, their after school program, they had 20 kids sign up. So she's going to be starting that here in a couple of weeks. And so I think 20 kids were at the church last night, got all signed up. A lot of the kids that we'd have gone to wouldn't have had any, um, a lot of the parents wouldn't know how to read and they don't have any hope of um, really having an education themselves. So that was really impacting. The last night that we were there, we were, there, we were able to be at their church, we painted it. And um, by the last night we were there and there's a lady that came, we had gone back to her place and visited her. And that was probably just a highlight ending of the trip for me was to be able to <laughs> kind of sort of communicate a little bit. We talked <laughs> back and forth and she'd laugh and duck behind, she's probably my age, she'd duck behind your mom and laugh at what I said, you know? And I guess I did do something offensive because you're not supposed to re reference children by their height. 
because that's how, that's the only way you do for a dog or an animal. So I did do something. I was like, oh, that's where I failed. But <laughs> anyways, but learning a lot of those things, some of that stuff was very, very interesting to me. But um, anyways, I did turn it over to Emily and see what she can piece together what I missed. <laughs> Well, they told me that this was offensive after I'd done it the whole week, so <laughs> that was probably a little nerve-wracking for me, so <laughs> well, it's so good to be back, and I had an amazing time in Honduras. It was my first missions trip, first time being overseas. I've gone to Canada, but that's just natural, I'm half Canadian. <laughs> The youth camp was really fun. I got put on a team with about 10 people, and my team captain spoke actually good sweet English, um, Joseph Coons, and then, but he was busy with all of the, all of the other things that a team captain is busy with, and so I had fun working my way into the language a little bit. First day was, I rarely, I rarely get scared in my life, like actually scared. The first day I was scared. I was like, this is a new language, these are new people, I'm not quite sure what to do here. But my team was super friendly, I made lots of new friends there. Um, there was one girl in particular, I, I really had a good time with her. She's a pastor's daughter from a church in Las Delicias. And that was really fun getting to connect with her. They had ping pong there, so they were just bringing that into their youth camp. And I had a lot of fun playing with some of the people there. And then we, to Aunt Esther and Uncle Jeremy's church, I did Sunday school the one morning on Sunday, because it's called Sunday school. And <laughs> I did it in Spanish. That was my first time ever attempting something quite like that. And I think it went well. I didn't quite know what I was saying, so <laughs> I'm hoping it went well. They said it did. <laughs> I told, well, the Esther translated for me towards the end. I told them they could laugh at my funny Spanish if they wanted. So I, I didn't hear any laughs, so that's good. <laughs> Either they were just too polite or... I don't know. We painted the church then. It was a beautiful, bright coral. I actually, I love all the colors in Honduras. They have very bright colors. And I was a little, I was like, wait, are we changing the color from coral to something else or what? But it's such a pretty color. I love it. <laughs> and then our last day there, I had a lot of fun because all the, we had about, there's probably like 10, 15 kids and they were there on Tuesday night. We flew out on Wednesday. They were there on Tuesday night, and they were in Spanish. They were asking me, like, how do you how do you say this color in English? How do you say this color? Whatever. And so we were, I was teaching them how to say the colors in English. And then they started asking me, they were like, so they were like, how do you say Santa Claus in English? And I was like, you say it like Santa Claus. And then they were asking me, like, how do you say Tinkerbell in English? And I was like, you say Tinkerbell? <laughs> and they were like, how do you say Mickey Mo in English? I was like, Mickey Mo? I was like, what is that? <laughs> and then I was like, and after a while, I realized that you're saying Mickey Mouse. And I was like, oh, in English, you say Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so that was, yeah, I was, I was a little confused for a while. <laughs> We got to do some sightseeing. I'm laughing now. Okay. We got to do some sightseeing and we got to go to a tourist town, which is very cute. They had like probably 20 different little stores you could go and see like Honduran made items. So I got a few things there. And then we got to go to the ocean and see the Pacific Ocean. It was really cool. We got to ride on a little boat out to the island. And then we got to ride on, it's called a tuk-tuk, so it's like a, it's a two wheels in the back, one wheel in the front, and then it's kind of like a little golf cart. It was really fun. We kind of felt like you were about to fall off it, and it was really bumpy, but we had a great time with that. And we got to go to the market the last day with the coons, and that was super fun. We um, actually 
I, I did not know this, but in Honduras, their pigs, maybe it's here too, but their pigs are huge. <laughs> we went to the market and there was like a pig. It was, I don't know. We were, we were trying to figure out the height at our house, but I'm not going to say heights because I might get it wrong. I tend to exaggerate a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> it was, I'll say it was probably six foot tall. <laughs> so, <laughs> long, sorry. <laughs> okay. It was a very big pig. It was, it was a tall pig too, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it was hanging up. It, they, they discarded the head somewhere. <laughs> okay, I need to get back on track. <laughs> A few things that I noticed that were different about Honduras. <laughs> One thing we went to the store, it's called um, Piz, like P-A-I-Z. And they had this cool thing, it was a cart escalator, so it was like a straight, escalator with no steps and you could just push your cart up it and the cart stopped it. I, I thought it was amazing. <laughs> and then their money over there is in lempiras. So about 25 lempiras would be equal to a dollar here. And then uh, their traffic was very interesting. They don't have any rules about where they can drive on the street. So you can literally be about this far from a car and you're like blocked in on all sides. There's no way to move. And then we were, yeah, we were about like this far from the car in front of us, this far from the car behind us, and then the bus in front of us was trying to back up. And we were like, this is not gonna work. So we got even closer to the car behind us, and yeah, that was fun. And okay, my last little, my last little odd thing I noticed, or fun thing I noticed, um, they have lots of wild dogs. They had like so many wild dogs. It was so fun. Probably, we went to probably five or six services and two or three of them I had a dog sitting under my feet. So that was a new experience for me. The dogs can roam in and out of the church whenever they want to. So I had a wonderful time in Honduras. It was an uh, impactful time for me. And I'm so glad to be back, but so glad for the experiences I got to have. Yeah. So now I'm going to turn over my girl. Oh. <coughs> the only reason I'm saying something is I wanted to honor uh, Esther and Jeremy. <laughs> and um, I'm, so I'm coming to you from a mother's perspective, not an adventure. <laughs> 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 I got there and got to be with them. It was wonderful. But when we left the airport in tears, oh. that wasn't quite so <laughs> Probably the two biggest things that um, that startled me was the extreme poverty. I just wasn't expecting that. Esther assured me that everything is just as normal in Honduras as it is here. But I didn't find it quite that way. However, they do have the extreme poverty in Dorcas or Esther's uh, people are all in that state, but they do have the wealth too. They have Walmart and Papa John's and Little Caesars and all those things as well. So there was the extreme, but I asked Esther, I said, would your people come and shop at Walmart? Or, and she said, no, they would They would shop at all the little uh, all the little stores around as we traveled along. So that was, uh, that was really outstanding to me. The traffic was another thing that Emily touched on that, it was just, I would never dream of driving there. I mean, they just, they make a lane if there is none. Uh, we, we were, one time we were traveling and we're in our lane and a guy's coming this way blinking his lights. And I'm thinking, well, sir, you're in the wrong lane. <laughs> but he was blinking his, his lights, telling us to, I guess, to get out of his way. I'm not sure why. But anyhow, they made their own the, the, uh, paths, whatever they wanted to do. So, uh, Anyhow, after I got home, one of my friends from Canada called me and she said, you know, Honduras is the most dangerous country in North America. She said, I didn't tell you that before you left. <laughs> so I immediately called Esther. I said, uh, is this true? You never told me that. <laughs> and she said, well, it is true. But she said it really applies to the gangs. And she said, when you're not a part of that, it's not really dangerous. She said, did you feel dan uh, in danger when you were here? And I did not. 
And she said the other thing is they highly respect pastors. But she said the chance of you getting in trouble as a pastor, she said they just have a high admiration for that. But the other thing that impressed me was the presence of God. One evening at youth camp, I was finished. I made two meals for the youth camp, and I was kind of trying to get finished up so I could get into the service. But I heard Jeremy and Esther leading the singing, and it was just so powerful because you could feel God's presence. And I thought, I want to get this done and get in there before it's over. You know, but it was really powerful. And the ladies would come up to you and hug you, and they I couldn't understand the word they were saying, but you just... Your spirit just blent with them because you knew they were trying to tell you that they loved Jesus or they loved you. It was just, uh, it was a very real thing. And then the, the uh, other thing that I was outstanding was um, starting the um, after school program. Eventually they want to start a school. And I thought, you know, God has everything into control. Um, Esther never really felt a call to missions. She loved that type of thing, but she said for her to ever really feel a call, she didn't. But she followed Jeremy, who did have a call. But you know, way back, I don't know, eight years ago, when Answers in Genesis started their school, she was one of the she was the first teacher at that school, and so went through all the preliminaries of starting a school and what to do. And I thought, you know, God has everything under control because you know some of the people there just wanted to start a school like that, and she said, no, we can't do that. It just takes steps. And so you pray for them as they, as they start this school. Uh, it's hopefully to help them to uh, learn to read and write because a lot of them can't do that. Then they can't get a job, and of course, then they can't get ahead in life. So that's their, that's their big goal. And she just texted since we're home, and she said, we have a bus driver. So that was a big answer to prayer. That somebody else is going to be driving the bus, and they won't have to worry about that aspect. So when I came home, I went because I wanted to not have to worry quite as much, but I'm not sure if that helps. <laughs> well, thank you, Sister Byer and Dorcas Emily for uh, that report. And so glad to hear that the Lord was with you and helped you and to know that the Lord is helping Jeremy and Esther as well. Amen. It's just a, yes. an encouragement. Of course, this church supports them. Yes. So we're very grateful for what God is doing in their lives and how he is using them in Honduras. Now, none of them talked about the issue getting on the planes. Wasn't that pretty traumatic? Um, so, okay. <laughs> but we have the word. It was terrible. So we'll have to ask about that a little bit later. But I did hear that that was uh, quite the quite the ordeal getting on the planes on the on their first uh, first flights. But we'll have to have to ask them about that later. Thank you so very much. Uh, let me mention just a couple of announcements. Uh, if you have any questions about the uh, youth convention trip, uh, talk to Eli after the service. Uh, he can do his best to answer those questions. And uh, so I know that our young people are looking forward <clears throat> to their, their time there. And uh, so let's, let's be praying the Lord uh, would help yes. those of us that are going. Let me also mention uh, that a week from tonight will be our uh, first appetizers and uh, apologetics session. <coughs> and we'll be having that down at the fellowship hall and... And so I just wanted to make a note of that uh, so that you know that you can bring uh, sweet or salty finger foods and a drink. And that's basically all you have to do. And uh, you bring that and then we'll have a time of, of uh, looking at God's word and, uh, and then also of, of having a time of fellowship. So keep that, keep that in mind. Well, I'm not going to be very long tonight. Um, we were very long-winded Sunday night, and I apologize for that. But uh, it would have been much longer if we had to have a, a translator, and we did not have a translator. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway. The Times reporter of New Philadelphia, Ohio, reported in September 1990, 1985 a celebration of a New Orleans municipal pool. The party around the pool was held to 
to celebrate the first summer in memory without a drowning at the city pool. So in honor of the occasion, 200 people had gathered, including 100 certified lifeguards. As the party was breaking up and the four lifeguards on duty began to clear the pool, they found a fully dressed body in the deep end. They tried to revive Jerome Moody, who was 31 years of age, but it was too late. He had drowned, surrounded by lifeguards, celebrating their successful season. Such a sad, sad story, <clears throat> but an interesting application. Sinners are dying all around us with Christians near who have the life-saving message. All of us, I think, understand that one of the primary responsibilities that we have as Christians is that of sharing our faith. Mm -hmm. In the Great Commission, Jesus said to the disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. As Christ was preparing to uh, return back to his father, Jesus told his disciples to herald the good, good message, to publish the good tidings, to Proclaim good news to all the world. But then in Acts chapter 1, on the occasion of Christ's ascension, Jesus said again to the disciples, And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The disciples were commissioned to share the gospel, <clears throat> and it started at home. The command to go and proclaim the good message to every creature, I would remind us this evening, is just as relevant to us today as it was to the disciples of Christ. And I, I would just pause to commend you and thank you for your example and your influence planting the gospel seed in the hearts of those you, you come in contact with, store or in your employment. But having said that, I do believe that there are always ways that we can improve. I believe that through the means of praying for boldness and studying God's word and studying other religions and studying gospel presentation methods and even practicing among other Christians, we can become better equipped in sharing the gospel with others. If you have your Bibles, look quickly at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Peter, in this epistle, is writing to the Jews and Gentiles in the region of Asia Minor. The people to whom Peter is writing were possibly converts of Paul. Another individual suggests the possibility that some of the recipients could have heard Peter's message on the day of Pentecost. And they had returned to their home territory. <clears throat> Peter's purpose in writing to this group of people is described in one commentary as to urge the dispersed Christians to fortitude, to patience, and hope, and holiness of life in the face of hostile mistreatment by their enemies. Same commentary quotes another individual stating the aim of 1 Peter is being to show Christians how to live out their redemption in a hostile world. Sounds like something that we ought to think of. But look at verses 15 to 16 of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, I mean chapter 3 rather, verses 15 and 16. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. The Greek word there for ready means to be prepared. The Greek word for answer is, uh, is from a Greek word that we get apology. It means to give a plea or it means to give a defense. Peter here is saying, be prepared, be ready to answer or give a defense of your faith to the one who questions you concerning him. It's clear that we as disciples of Christ should be prepared to answer the questions concerning our faith. Let me ask you are, you, are you prepared to answer the person in the post office or in your employment who asks you what you believe? I 
I believe that a lack of preparation can lead to a lack of presentation. So with the help of the Lord in these sessions down at the fellowship hall, I, I, want to, uh, I want to help us become better prepared in dialogue with others concerning our faith. I trust it will be informative and valuable uh, to us. And so let me give you quickly a few reasons for this topic. Number one, the scripture commands us to be ready. Through the apostle Peter, the Lord is telling the believer to be ready to answer. The command to be ready is followed by the adverb always. It means that wherever we go, we are to be prepared to answer. Are we ready? Are we prepared? Do we have the answers to the questions about our faith? Now, I know that, uh, that in a sense, we never can be completely prepared. We may not be able to answer every question somebody throws their uh, throws our direction. There, there are different ways to ask questions, and and so there's a, a lot of a lot of things that may be thrown at us that we might have to say. You know, I don't I don't know the entirety of that answer. And there may be there's nothing wrong with saying I don't know the answer, but I'll get the answer. Um, but I think at the base we can begin to understand and have an answer uh, to the questions that they are asking. The scripture commands us to be ready. The society, secondly, asks for a reason. How many of you would say that you've been asked a reason for your faith? Anybody been asked about your faith? Sure. And the more and more wickedly our society becomes, the greater the difference between us and those who don't know Jesus. And as they see the difference in us, they begin asking questions. When we are joyful in the midst of tribulation and when we're hopeful in the midst of despair and when we're peaceful in the midst of tragedy, the world takes notice, don't they? Questions are source of joy and hope and peace. Concerning the importance of being ready to answer, we must not only consider the people who are heathen, but we must also consider the atheists and the agnostics and the followers of other other religions. We must be ready to give answers and show them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Our culture is becoming more and more intellectual. And with that, we must be ready to give an intellectual response. <clears throat> and so we want to, we want to look at uh, four different, uh, kind of lumped them together. So obviously when you talk about giving an answer for the faith that is within you, there's a lot of different ways we can go, isn't there? But we're trying to narrow it down to maybe um, a few of the more common things that perhaps in America we might face. Lastly, this topic is important because the soul winner should have a response. Society is going to ask for a reason, but the soul winner should have a response. And 1 Peter says to be ready to give an answer. God wants us to be prepared. And so I think we ought to do our best uh, to, to be prepared. In closing, just a few words that were written by a former president of Asbury College. You may recognize the name Dennis Kinlaw. He wrote a devotional book, <clears throat> This Day with the Master. But in his book, this is what he says. God has given us a revelation of truth. And it is our business to reach out to the men and women who live in intellectual darkness and let the light of the gospel in our lives shine into their minds and lives. He says, we have a serious obligation to know the gospel well enough so that when we share it, the winsomeness of its truth is evident and compelling. And then he concludes with, with this, he says, are you continuing to train your mind so God can use it to reach a world in darkness? He says, let us not become lazy in our salvation. We will have to give an account of the way we have used our intellectual resources. And so may God help us. Amen. God help us to get to the place where we, we have an answer of the faith that is within us. The young salesman was disappointed about losing a big sale. And as he, as he talked with his sales manager, he lamented, I guess it just proves you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. The manager replied, son, take my advice. He said, your job is not to make him drink. Your job is to make him thirsty. Mm -hmm. And so it is with evangelism. Our lives should be so filled with Christ that they create a thirst for the gospel, a thirst for something 
more. So God help us as we as we study, <clears throat> as we study to be ready to answer concerning the faith in our hearts that we will live a life that makes them thirsty for more. And may God help us to live that kind of life. Amen. So I trust these sessions. This is just kind of a kind of an intro to that. And I know that that's not going to be happening four weeks in a row, just one time a month. But I uh, just thought I would share that as an introduction to those to that series tonight. All right, thank you for being here tonight. And uh, let's stand together and let's trust the Lord to continue to help us. Brother Doug. I've been using this Bible for a long time. That paragraph is that potential reference is circled to the name of Chuck Jones, the guy is in Jesus now. But he was the most outgoing evangelical person I've ever seen. I mean, a men's retreat with him. And he told the story, they were getting in an elevator, a high rise, and this guy was coming toward the elevator, so he held the door for the guy to get in, in the, the elevator. I don't even know where I'm going. He hit the stop button. Between floors, he started telling me about Jesus and going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so important. <laughs> oh, there are many ways to, to evangelize, aren't there? <laughs> All right, and may God help us to take advantage of the opportunities that, that God puts across in our path and, and those that intersect our path. Let's, let's pray that God would help us to take advantage of those opportunities.